The link between dinosaurs and birds is an ever-growing one thanks to the various discoveries within paleontology and millions of years of evolution. After all, birds are the last of the dinosaurs, first evolving in the late Jurassic and raising to prominence in the early Cretaceous. It is thanks to various crucial scientific discoveries that we've managed to discover and determine this link between the feathered flyers of our modern day and the reptilian titans of our planet's past. This link became more prominent with the discoveries and discussions of the late 20th century and the early 2000s, with new findings bringing to light a key aspect of dinosaur evolution that have shaped this group of astounding animals to this very day. One of those key discoveries, of course, was the presence of feathers. Since then, various feathered dinosaurs have been brought to light, each one more extravagant and extraordinary than the last. In the year 2000, a feathered dinosaur was described that would continue to redefine what we know about dinosaurs, taking to the air in the ancient Cretaceous forests. The four-winged flyer, known as Microraptor. Microraptor is one of the most pivotal dinosaurs ever discovered, thanks to many, many contributions this genus has provided to dinosaur paleontology specifically to uncovering the evolution of avian and non-avian dinosaurs. Avian dinosaurs are, in simple terms, birds, or at least what we typically think of as birds, while non-avian dinosaurs are what we typically think of when we think dinosaurs. However, for the discovery of Microraptor and other feathered dinosaurs, that fine line has certainly been blurred. This peculiar little dinosaur has an interesting little story behind its discovery. It all began in China. And like many fossil stories, this story started with a lucky farmer. One day, a farmer found the fossil of a toothed bird. Not long after, he began finding even more fossils in the nearby pit, uncovering all sorts of fascinating feathered fossils. In particular, the legs and tail with fossilized impressions of feathers. However, this was a bit more complicated a situation than it might sound. Though we had discovered several fossils of feathered dinosaurs, they were still fragmentary and in pieces, and he had to find a way to put them together so he could sell his findings. So he cemented the fossils, pieced them together, and presented this fossil bird to potential buyers. Eventually, the buyer took the specimen and smuggled it to the US, where the buyer in turn presented the specimen at a gem show in Arizona, where the fossil was promptly bought by the Dinosaur Museum in Utah, and in 1999 was unveiled as a new species of dinosaur called Archaeoraptor. You'd think the story would end here. The fossil was taken by the museum, unveiled to the world, and cataloged into the grand taxonomy of dinosaurs. However, this ain't it, chief. After the fossil was unveiled, scientists continued to analyze the specimen, and many noticed that there was something off about Archaeoraptor. When paleontologist Phil Curry analyzed the fossil, he noticed that the tail and lower body didn't quite fit with each other. As the investigation continued, Dr. Zhu Jing noticed that the specimen being studied had the same tail as another specimen he was currently studying raising a bit more flags within the investigation. Upon further analysis, the team found out that the fossil was actually a composite, or consisting of multiple parts from different types of animals. Remember when I said that it was unveiled to the world? Yeah, that wasn't supposed to happen. Due to the controversy surrounding the specimen, it was meant to remain classified until the team studying it could come to a better conclusion. However, the media wasn't having that, and that duo, wanting the quickest, biggest scoop, released their findings prematurely and leaked the name Archaeoraptor. This stirred the pot of controversy as more skeletons fell out of the closet regarding the purchase of the fossil, both figuratively and very literally. And eventually, the notable situation of the fossil being cemented together. Needless to say, when the museum and the team discovered the last part, they were less than pleased they had a chimera. However, from the pieces of catastrophe came the birth of a new genus in the year 2000, 
when Dr. Yuzhing named a new species of dinosaur called Microraptor, meaning small thief, and for a good reason, growing up to 3 feet or 77 centimeters in length, and with estimates weighing up to 1 kilogram, or 2.2 pounds. At such a pint size, it was considered the smallest non-avian dinosaur on record. Microraptor is an extremely fascinating dinosaur, mainly for its various characteristics that made it so extremely distinct, even amongst those it was related to. Microraptor is part of a family of dinosaurs called dromaeosaurs, a group of non-avian dinosaurs just short of birds, characterized by their long grasping arms, sickle-shaped foot claws, and extensive feathers covering their bodies. When looking at the skeletons of dromaeosaurs, one can see the similarities with birds, such as hollow bones and an overall build resembling birds. For years, dromaeosaurs, or raptor dinosaurs, have been the key in unraveling the secrets of the links between non-avian dinosaurs and avian dinosaurs, due to dromaeosaurs being some of the most bird-like of the non-avian dinosaurs. Microraptor in particular took this to a whole new level. Microraptor was one of the first feathered dinosaurs known to science, and has become a defining trait of this genus, with a coat of feathers covering the body like those of modern birds. To the point you would swear it was a bird were it not for its other defining traits. A mouthful of needle-like teeth, a pair of sickle-shaped claws on their feet, a long tail ending in a fan, and most importantly, a key characteristic that has become its true defining trait. Two pairs of wings adorning its body, one pair on its arms, and the other on its legs. Within these wings, several very familiar structures were discovered, structures found in flight feathers of birds, and would have allowed Microraptor to take to the skies. Microraptor's ability to take to the air is rather complicated. The wings were extremely peculiar because of their presence on the arms and legs. For its time, it was a relatively new and baffling discovery. Why would Microraptor have wings on both its arms and legs? What were the leg wings being used for exactly? A common consensus is that Microraptor was a glider, taking off from tree to tree using its four wings to carry it through the air and stabilize the small raptor to keep it aloft. Over the years, much change has shaped Microraptor's ability to glide, as more Microraptor remains have been discovered and more tests have been run on Microraptor's aerial abilities. To understand how exactly Microraptor moved through the air, we'll have to look at the biomechanics of Microraptor. Scientists have discovered that Microraptor was able to lift its hind legs vertically thanks to its specially adapted pelvis, and it was initially thought that Microraptor could glide through the air with splayed limbs, soaring through the ancient forests of early Cretaceous China like a small biplane. Using these hind wings in conjunction with the tail, this would have allowed Microraptor to remain stabilized in the air as it glided while giving the animal the ability to adjust and steer as it soared through the air. It was also found that Microraptor was capable of landing from shorter or more guided distances, while also providing evidence towards an arboreal lifestyle, as the study found that the animal was better equipped to glide from tree to tree as it made its way through the treetops, like an avian flying squirrel, or paravian flying squirrel. Tomato tomato. However, re-examination of this adaptation, while not affecting the idea of the gliding itself, has seen some controversy regarding its posture and gliding prowess. When the hindquarters of Microraptor were analyzed in 2010, the legs were found still being able to lift, though the previously suggested biplane posture would have been detrimental to the animal's abilities to remain stable in the air, and it was suggested that instead of gliding in the posture of a biplane, it was more efficient for the animal to have a lateral abduction when gliding and providing more practical stabilization in the air. However, this theory proved to be less than substantial, with many pointing out that the author of the 2010 study 
was using data inconsistent with Microraptor anatomy, with the specimen utilized for the study consisting of the remains of a crushed Microraptor. So, for the time being, the biplane model holds up if Microraptor was a glider. That is, if Microraptor was a glider. New studies have suggested that this four-wing curiosity wasn't merely a kite on the wind, but a powered flyer. In 2013, it was proposed that not only was Microraptor capable of powered flight, but it was more efficient a flyer than its distant cousin Archaeopteryx, a dinosaur that is widely considered the first bird. The team heading the study noted that Microraptor had several traits consistent with those of modern birds that were capable of powered flight, such as a robust sternum, asymmetrical feathers, and shoulder girdles similar to those of birds that would have allowed them to flap. That said, while most scientists agree that Microraptor could have been capable of powered flight, it wasn't the most acrobatic flyer with its flying abilities being nowhere near that of true birds. While Microraptor was at home in the trees and skies, it wasn't that great on the ground. However, a study in 2016 pointed out that this wouldn't have been much of a problem, as Microraptor was able to leap or even launch into the air, further supporting the powered flight hypothesis. However, this lack of mobility on the ground and adaptations to make its way through the air have suggested an arboreal or tree-dwelling lifestyle for Microraptor. In fact, this helps give further evidence to where these traits came from. With Microraptor likely developing these traits and thriving as a tree-dwelling flyer for both an energy-saving locomotion and avoiding predators on the ground as they became more specialized. While Microraptor may have been vulnerable on the ground, amongst the trees and in the sky, it was untouchable. And thanks to the countless amounts of fossil material, we have an understanding of Microraptor's outsides as well as its insides. Various specimens of Microraptor contain the stomach contents of these animals, revealing a very generalized diet, from small lizards, to fish, to even baby birds. This further supports the tree-dwelling lifestyle of this inquisitive flyer, with the presence of the arboreal lizards and tree-dwelling birds in their stomachs. However, the fish scales in Microraptor's stomachs presents a new side to Microraptor. It would seem that Microraptor's food wasn't only limited to the trees, but they may have been venturing on the ground near, say, lakes or ponds, or even rivers to snag a fish, or to scavenge one anyway. Microraptor was an animal that was far more dynamic than previously thought, a raptor that was both at home in the trees, but wasn't afraid to snatch up an opportunity on the ground. It's thanks to findings like these that Microraptor is one of the most well-known dinosaurs on record, with over 300 specimens having been discovered, each one presenting a new and exciting details as scientists continue to paint the picture of this fascinating flyer. And it's because of these finds that the phrase painting a picture becomes more than a figure of speech. In 2012, a study by Quang Gao Li and his team were able to analyze the pigments contained within the fossilized remains of Microraptor feathers. When the feathers are put under an electron microscope and comparing those pigments to modern birds, something astounding was revealed. The colors of Microraptor. At least, what the colors would have been when they were alive. When a Microraptor, or in this case, the species of Microraptor analyzed known as Microraptor Gui, was alive, it would have had a coat of feathers similar to a crow, with blackish-blue pigmentation. And what was more interesting is that these feathers, like crows, were iridescent. Due to the occurrence of iridescence, when reflecting light, the feathers would shimmer different colors. What's more, this was only one species of Microraptor with this coloration. Given how colors can vary between species alone, one can only imagine the elaborate colors of other species of Microraptor. With these findings, we not only have a clear picture of what this animal looked like in life, but it was truly a visual wonder that was even more bird-like than previously imagined, with only a few million years separating their blurred bloodlines. 
off the ground. Very few animals in the fossil record, least of all dinosaurs, can be so well known as Microraptor. From the countless fascinating remains of this flying wonder, we have been able to paint a picture of an animal that has been able to link the ever-growing connections between dinosaurs and birds, and ultimately, understand what it goes beyond the bones, and in the flesh, and the feathers of course. As more material of Microraptor continues to be uncovered, this bird-like raptor will continue to astonish us in turn, and with that astonishment, comes more pieces added to the dinosaur puzzle and their inseparable link with modern birds.